The most common use case for Marimo is to use it in edit mode, which is the typical mode where you have cells and where you work with data. However, what you can also choose to do is to run Marimo in app mode. This allows you to write quite elaborate apps with just Python, and in this video I'd like to highlight how that works exactly. There's a couple of things that you can do to really make compelling demos. As a compelling example, I figured I'd talk about this one app I made during a live stream. What you see on the right hand side over here is a screenshot from a Rocket League game. It's a video game where you try to play football with racing cars. And what I'm trying to do is parse useful information out of it using some AI models. I'm running these models locally via this tool called Olama. And I've got an interface here that allows me to pass a prompt to the model. And I'm also able to select a, and in this case, because I'm doing a demo, I'm gonna go for the super lightweight, but slightly inaccurate model. I'm also able to do some scrubbing so I can move to a different position in the YouTube video that I downloaded. I can hit submit. And then after a few seconds, I get a big description here, which is the response that I got from my LLM model that can also handle some vision tasks. And it actually seems to do a pretty good job in this case. It's trying to describe this image. It correctly sees that I'm talking about a video game here. There's a player wearing headphones and holding a controller. It's probably talking about the bit over there. There's some sort of virtual reality game here, something with racing. It's not perfect, but it does a pretty okay job. So as you can hopefully imagine, there are a couple of moving parts to all of this, but one thing that's really nice is that I have a single interface and this can be especially useful if you're in a bit more of a business scenario where you want to have an app that you're going to give to a business user so they can play with it without having to worry about Python or virtual environments or anything like that. So let's now dive into the notebook that actually generates this. Now to do that, by the way, I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to run Marimo edit and then examples rocketleague.py because this is the file that has the notebook in it. This is what the notebook looks like, and it's a big notebook. It's so big, in fact, that I decided to use a slightly different layout. I'm using multiple columns here, and the thinking is that the first column just contains all of my helper functions, and then for different use cases, I have different columns. So the main app view would be in the second column. Again, helper functions go into the first one. And there's a little bit of code here that I commented out, but this is for some aggregation research. Different concerns can go into different columns, and sometimes, when you're building a larger app, this can be a very convenient way to structure your code. But if you look around, then you're going to notice that there's a cell down below over here where I've got everything I need to generate this form. There's another cell above over here that's going to show me the image that I've selected. And then down below here, I've got the response from the LLM, as well as a little snippet that tells me how long the model took to run. One thing to point out here is that what I'm looking at is a notebook that is in edit mode. I can see the cells and I can definitely edit them. But by turning this into a proper app, we're going to think a little bit less about cell inputs and code that go in, and we're going to think more about these cell outputs. When we're going to run this in app mode, the end user is not going to concern themselves with the input of all of these cells, but instead they get to experience the outputs of all of these different cells. Now, to configure the app proper, there's a button over here that you want to press. It's below the one that has the save icon. And in my setup, you'll get an interface that looks a little bit like this. Now, if you do this the first time, it might look a little bit different. And that is because I have gone up over here to this drop down, and I've selected not to view this as a vertical or as a slide. I've chosen to go for a grid layout. When you do this, you can literally click and drag elements into a canvas, which gives you a very quick way to just build an app. So just to show what that will be like, let's remove this cell at the bottom over here. I need to then scroll around, and then next, what I got to do is I got to find the output cell that I'm interested in dragging in. So I can just do that. And then when I scroll down, there is a little resize icon over here that I can go ahead and use. I can move this around. And effectively, all of these cell outputs can snap to a grid. And that is how I can construct a app. And I can go back into edit mode. I can go back into sort of constructing the app mode with this little icon over here. But after a while, you will be done making the app and you will also be ready to share it. Now, one quick thing to note is that if you choose for a grid layout, then you are going to notice that the Marimo app file actually points to a layout file now. And that's a file that you can actually find on disk. It's this file that really keeps track of where the outputs of the cells should go. And you can also find some metadata, like how many columns are there, how many rows are there, what's the maximum width, all that good stuff. It's also a file that you're never really supposed to touch directly, but it is good to know that the Marimo file itself doesn't contain the grid layout. There's a separate file that takes care of all of that. Anyway, if you now want to actually run this in app mode, then you're not going to use the edit command anymore. You're going to refer to the run command instead. 
And now when I run this, then I get the same result that I had before. What I've shown you in this video is a way to deploy Marimo as a web app. It is very general, but the way that we've deployed it so far assumes that you have a Python backend that you would like to run from. Having a Python backend has many, many benefits, but you are also able to deploy a Marimo notebook both in app mode and in edit mode using Wasm. Effectively, that means that you can run the entire Marimo app in the front end without needing anything from a Python backend. And if this sounds interesting, uh, do check out this other video that we've also linked in the show notes, because that's going to dive in more details on that topic.